Ladies, I'm here on my show. I'm here to talk about some uh, in, in, NBA, NFL news. I'm going to go over some of the news, some of the injury updates, um, and some just some other news. So, we have some news that just came in about 20 minutes ago. The hashtag Patriots ruled out running back Damian Harris for Thursday's game versus hashtag Bills. A big AFC matchup on Thursday Night Football tomorrow. Finally, really good Thursday game. So, let's, let's see what uh, Stevenson can do um, against the Bills. He's, the Bills' defense hasn't been uh, that great. I mean, they did help Chubb, hold Chubb to 14 yards, but I feel like he, they can talk to him in the running game. Um, but he, I think he'll get some, a good amount of receptions for like a decent amount of yards, like 70, 80 yards. Because they're using him in the running game and in the passing game, so. It's Ramondre Stevenson time. So, Ramondre fantasy owners, they're loving this news. I feel like Ramondre's better anyways. Uh, than Damien Harris. Damien Harris is a good backup running back, if you ask me. Uh, QB Matthew Stafford will not practice today and is still in concussion protocol, Sean McVay said. So, he'll not practice, practice and he's still in concussion protocol. Feels like he's been concussion protocol, protocol for like a month. The Rams are pretty much the 2021 49ers, but with no picks in the next couple of years for their future. They trade all that future for that one Super Bowl ring. The Rams' season is over anyway. It's just. So, er, I was about to say Sam Darnold. Aaron Donald and Stafford. Just to come out and say they're not playing the rest of the season, there's no point in playing the rest of the season. But if the Seahawks do somehow manage to lose this game, and the Rams don't have Stafford, Cup, or Aaron Donald, then they don't deserve a playoff spot. So speaking of Aaron Donald, the Rams DT Aaron Donald is ruled out for Sunday's game versus the Seahawks. This is his first ever career NFL game missed. Bears say, say, oh, it's time for the Rams to tank. They have no picks to tank for. And maybe Aaron Donald should have retired on that uh, after winning that Super Bowl ring. But it's over for the Rams. And the Lions have that first round pick, so it ain't looking good for the Rams now or their future because they have no draft picks. Ravens running back J.K. Dobbins has your knee has returned to practice Wednesday, which begins his 21 day window in which he can get activated off injured reserve. So J.K. Dobbins is going to get activated off injured reserve uh, possibly soon. But hopefully he's, he doesn't get hurt again, because he's he's pretty he's pretty decent running back for that team. Steelers running back Jalen Warren told reporters that doctors have cleared him to return from his hamstring injury, and he expects to play Sunday versus the hashtag Falcons. He returns in one week with that, and Weatherspoon is hell eight with a, with the same injury. But but some uh, good news there for Steelers fans have that running back duo and Harris and uh, Warren. I mean, Harris has been playing really well recently, and Jalen Warren's been pretty underrated the whole season. No practice for Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers, who is nursing rib and thumb injuries, but the Packers head coach Matt LaFleur said he does expect Aaron Rodgers to play Sunday versus the Bears. Um, he owns Chicago. There's no way Rodgers was missing that game. It would have created a QB controversy, and he knows that. I mean, I get he's injured, but he owns the Bears, so. He, I guess he wanted to play this game so that he didn't create a QB controversy. Hashtag Falcons tied in. Kyle Pitts underwent season-ending knee surgery Tuesday for head coach Arthur, Arthur Smith. So after that, another injury, he's out for the season. Um, really unfortunate for the, for the tight end and the Falcons. The Falcons never used him, so it, so his production will be that the the as if he was playing. The Falcons need to trade him, or or if Pitts was smart, he would uh, request for a trade. And they're a run heavy team, and, and well, maybe the part of that is they also don't have a good quarterback and Mariota, and they're a run heavy team, so it really doesn't like fit the team.
Uh, Eagles now open the 21-day window for DT Jordan Davis. He can play soon as Sunday versus the Titans. Maybe they'll help their run defense get a bit better. But they're gonna get scat but they're gonna get destroyed. They're gonna get destroyed by Derrick Henry. Their run defense just ain't good. Former NFL quarterback Trent Dilfer is expected to become the next head coach. Football coach at UAB sources told ESPN's Pete Thamel. So although deal isn't been finalized, they are expected to come to terms in the coming days. So the NFL flexed out this season's potential MVP Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Denver Broncos on Sunday night, December 11th, to get this matchup. Uh, the Los Angeles Chargers versus the Miami Dolphins, Tui Tagovailoa versus Justin Herbert. So that's crazy, man. Um, I know if they should have flexed the. I knew they would probably flex the Broncos and won the prime time games, but against the Chiefs. Nobody wants to watch Russell Wilson play. So glad they flexed that matchup so we could get two to a great quarterback matchup at 8.20 p.m. on Sunday, December 11th. So we have a new top six in the college football playoff poll. I know this isn't NFL related, but this tweet that I'm just looking at through Adam Schefter's Twitter, I didn't go to the top 25 rankings, or mostly top four and then the ones that are out. Georgia's one, Michigan two, TC three, USC four, and new top six. Ohio State dropped to five, and Alabama six. So, so for the college football fans out there, there's your top six college football playoff rankings. The six that really have a chance. Longtime former Ravens DT Brandon Williams, who who had been waiting for the right opportunity, opportunity like Lee Ball Joseph and Indama Kansu, is signing with the Chiefs practice squad with the idea of going to the active roster per sources. He reunites with the Chiefs defense line coach. That's why he went to the Chiefs with their defense line coach. And he's 33 years old. He spent nine seasons in Baltimore and went to his loan problem in 2018. And he becomes a late season addition in Kansas City. So through 11 games, Max Crosby has recorded 67 tackles, 10.5 sacks, 17 tackles for loss, 22 quarterback hits, two fourth fumbles, two passes de defended, and one fumble recovery. And he's fourth in the NFL in sacks, third in the NFL in TFLs. 67 total tackles, leads on and fell defense linemen, 17 tackles for loss. Max Crosby's been the long, bright spot, along with Josh Jacobs, I think, this year for the Raiders. They've been the two bright spots for the team. And he's blocked a field goal. And this, without, and this, is, and this is without any help from Chandler Jones. Bears have now placed... Wide receiver Darnell Mooney and safety Eddie Jackson are injured in injured reserve, effectively ending their season. So they're both out for the season. They're pretty much going to probably try and lose every game here from now on. So and it sucks for the sucks for the Bears. The Bears might lose every game the rest of the season. So with a uh, Eddie sa Eddie safety Eddie Jackson out due to a foot injury. The Bears are signing free agent safety Adrian Colbert per his agents. So NFL playoff scenarios uh, for week 13, you got two Minnesota Vikings nine and two versus the New York Jets seven and four on on Sunday on CBS at 1 p.m. Minnesota clinches a NFC North division title with a Minnesota win plus a Detroit loss or tie or a Minnesota tie plus a Detroit loss. That's playoff scenarios for the Vikings and the Philadelphia Eagles versus Tennessee Titans. Sunday, 1 p.m. on Fox. Philadelphia clinches a playoff, playoff berth with a Philadelphia win plus Washington loss plus a San Francisco loss or tie plus a San Seattle loss or tie. As long as both San Francisco and Seattle don't each don't tie or Philadelphia win plus a Washington tie plus a San Francisco loss plus a Seattle loss. So this is the press release for playoff scenarios. So, looks like Minnesota's going to clinch a division title with how terrible that division is. 
Now, Jerry Jones said on 105.3, the fan that Odell Beckham Jr.'s incident on, a, incident on a flight over this weekend is not an issue to the Cowboys' interest. His overall comp compatibility, his judgment, his behavior is not an issue with him, Jones said. It is with many. It isn't with him. He said the decision will be about 2022, not just the future. We have to have this year. It's very important. This year has to be a big part of it. We also have the whole show ahead of us. But we've got to have a situation where we can, where, where we can really contribute now. And he's not worried about visiting other teams before coming to Dallas on his conversation. It's very genuine, very competitive, feels confident, very, feels good about himself. I think he brings confidence, but very, very, very just compatible. So, I mean, it seems he might go to the Cowboys, possibly. Uh, Lions head coach Dan Campbell told reporters that for first round pick Jameson Williams to return with an injury to play Sunday versus the Jaguars will be a tall order, but anything's open. So, hopefully, Jameson Williams does play in his uh, first game. Brent Favre, one of the 38 defendants being sued by the Mississippi Department of Human Services, MDHS, filing a motion through his lawyers Monday in Mississippi Judicial Court to, to, to dismiss the complaint against himself and Favre Enterprises. So, so, so some more news coming out of Brent Favre. He's filed a motion through his lawyers to dismiss the complaint against himself and the Farm Enterprises. He actually thinks he's innocent. He, he thinks he's innocent. Just disappointed. Because a lot of people probably grew up loving Brett Farm, one of their favorite athletes on and off the field. It's really upsetting, though, for a lot of people. They stay releasing new Brett Farm information like when everyone's asleep. Because this was released like 4.49. Adam Schefter doesn't sleep. So, Elijah Mitchell is expected to miss six to eight weeks with the knee injury he suffered. So, about the same as his first injury. He's very talented. It's just he's always hurt. So, they're currently, they're probably currently building a set of plays for like their fullback, Jusak, is how you say his name. They can't possibly use CMC at over a 60% rate because they split the carries between Mitchell and uh, McCaffrey. Um, uh, so, Joe Mixon, who missed Cincinnati's win against the Titans due to a concussion, is trending in the direction of being able to play Sunday versus the Chiefs. So, it's looking like Joe Mixon's going to be able to play against the Chiefs. And the NFL denied wide receiver DK Metcalf's appeal uh, or like two days ago. The appeal of the 30K fine and post for arguing with an official during the most game first source. During the game, Metcalf was was said to ask the official if a play was pass interference and, and the official was said to respond, did I throw a flag? I don't know why they don't find refs ring bad at their jobs. So he got fined for a ref getting smart with him. Referees need to get humbled. Referees need to get humbled. To make room for their roster for Deshaun Watson, the Browns waived QB Deshaun, or Joshua Dobbs. So they, they added Deshaun Watson to their 53-man roster to play their next game, so... That's going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. And that's all I'll see for this NFL news. So, until next time, I have a lot. Peace.